Good morning, guys. So over the last two days, I had been spending a lot of time doing the plans up for the $100 greenhouse, which is to all intents and purposes, it's two hot beds next to each other with some cow panels over the top. And the challenges to that greenhouse were doors. In order to have the cow panels be steep enough, acute enough, so that they'd shed snow, uh, the pathway had to be very narrow, and which meant that the I had to have two doors, an upper door and a lower door. Lower door covers the narrow pathway. Upper door opens up and is wide enough for me to get uh, sleds or Rubbermaids in to dump mulch for the grow beds. So um, anyway, so the plans are now finished and they are on my Etsy store for those of you who are interested. I wanted to talk about why I felt like it was kind of important to, to do those right now. And the reason was that the little, honey, just sit down. You're fine. <laughs> sit and eat. Do it quick. Come on, chores. Um, the reason I felt like it was important to do it right now was because my little hotbed greenhouse has outperformed my big commercial greenhouse. The big greenhouse that you guys have seen in videos. Hey, Katie, how are you? Um, the big greenhouse that you guys have seen in videos is called a tough greenhouse, T-U-F-F. -F. And it's the only greenhouse that I had seen able to stand up to the wind in our area. Uh, most greenhouses that you see in our area are absolutely shredded. The plastic gets shredded by the wind. And um, most, I, I actually don't know anybody that uses their greenhouse as much as I use my greenhouses. Uh, just because greenhouses can be tricky. The venting, if you don't vent it right, everything on the inside dies. And, um, you know, I mean, that's probably one of the biggest ones, but the other thing is the wind. If you don't, if you, if your plastic isn't attached well enough, if your um, arches are not strong enough, if everything isn't squared up quite right, then the wind can, can just completely destroy your investment. Life begins with the seed. Good morning. We have a lot of wind here too. Yeah. So here in March and April, every day has had at least 20 mile an hour winds. And we've had gusts, you know, gusts of 50 and 60 miles an hour are pretty normal here. Uh, we have wind farms on all of the hills to the south and the east. And in fact, the first windstorm, windstorms, first windmills, what did I say windstorms? Mm -hmm. Windmills. We've got windmills and wind farms all along our south and east foothills. Uh, Idaho Falls, which is just south of us, actually had the first windmills and windmill farms in the U.S. that were like a commercial type of a government combined experiment was in our area, our area because we have a very consistent wind. We also have gusting, but, but there's always a breeze here. Um, so... Can you go ahead and eat quickly because you guys have chores to do, okay? Um, so the reason that I am excited about the little hotbed greenhouse is because its footprint, the amount of space it takes up on my property is extremely small, but the growing space in it is as much as my commercial greenhouse that cost me, I'm trying to remember how much it cost me. Uh, we got it in 2015 as part of a Kickstarter. I, I knit sweaters and gloves and hats and did ebooks um, as part of a Kickstarter, and I think it was $2,500. And um, and then it was like $400 shipping to just get it here. So we were like $3,000 into that greenhouse by the time it got here. Um, and it was complicated to put together. It was strong. It, it's a fantastic greenhouse. If you guys like conventional greenhouses and you have a lot of money to spend, a tough greenhouse is the way to go if you have a lot of wind. Uh, it lasted, our plastic, the original plastic on the tough greenhouse lasted five years, almost six years before we replaced it. And um, putting the new plastic on was not complicated. I had two little girls helping me uh, last, was it last October or October before? Was it last October? Um, that we put the new greenhouse plastic on and uh, it just wasn't a big deal. That being said, 
I couldn't fit my commercial greenhouse in my backyard. My little hotbed greenhouse that I that I built as an experiment last uh, last October and November, this one it fits in my backyard very easily. And in fact, I could put another one right next to it and and double the amount of growing space that I have in greenhouses by doing that. Um, so I'm actually considering selling my commercial greenhouse because I, I love that I don't have a lot of space wasted on pathways. And from the waist down, everything that's greenhouse is reinforced. So the wind can't beat it up. Um, it's not as susceptible to animal problems. Like if the cats went like this on the outside of my um, hotbed greenhouse, it wouldn't matter because there's a pallet under under it at, at up to waist height. And so instead of exposing the whole greenhouse to air, cold air coming through those holes, I just had the plastic go down that far all the way to the ground on the outside of the pallets because I wanted a double layer of protection. It's not the only layer of protection like in a normal greenhouse. It's just a double layer of protection. Um, good morning, Watchman. Good morning, a beautiful nest. Um, Andrew says in Michigan today, blowing 25 yesterday, got up to 55. I have plastic panel greenhouse. Um, the God smack 12. Please say hello to frost proof Florida. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You guys don't get frost. Yeah. Um, okay. So where was I going with this? So I have the plans up on the Etsy store. It's my first attempt at making, uh, the book. And it's a general how-to. It's not a use this material and only this material will work type of a thing. It's more about this is how I attach things. This is how I squared things up. Um, this is um, how I put the animals in the greenhouse. It's that kind of how-to. It's more of like a look at the basic pictures, understand the principle, look around on your own property and see if you can find something uh, that would work better than what I've used. That's the kind of plan it is. Um, hey, Andrea. Hey, DNR Homestead. So, yeah, that's where we are right now. And I wanted to tell you guys how it had worked. Uh, I don't know why it has worked better as far as even the growing part of it. The hotbed in the big greenhouse is younger and thus a little bit warmer. But the two hotbeds in the little greenhouse are, are working better. And I, and I don't really know why they are. Uh, it might be the microclimate that they're in. The little greenhouse is up against the south side of our house and our house is painted white. So it might be getting a little bit more of sunlight and heat bouncing off the house. That might've made a difference. Um, with the little greenhouse, I don't have to go out and knock snow off the same way that I do in the big greenhouse. In the big greenhouse, the top, the sides, everything is one big sheet of plastic. And so it's more susceptible to sagging and snow issues. Um, and then again, it's also because I keep chickens and cats and things like that around the greenhouse, the big greenhouse requires more repair just because uh, it's, it's just a different structure. Um, let's see what else. I have, we have already har harvested rhubarb out of the little greenhouse. It got massive. So I've already made jam this year, made jam in April from uh, rhubarb and store-bought strawberries. We have been harvesting tot soy, which is what came up the best in the little greenhouse, uh, which is a, a Chinese green. I've been harvesting that and radishes and Chinese cabbage for the rabbits. So they've been eating that. We've eaten some of the tot soy. Kaya, are you in the living room? Okay, I need you to have your gear on with hat and everything, please. Um, Michigan lady said, I would love a how-to book. So it's on the Etsy store. I don't know if it's in the description right now because I'm not sure how live streams work. But I think the price I put it out was $7.99. It's an ebook that is to be printed. I like to print them two sheets, two pages to a sheet, and then fit to page. And that's how I like to print them out. Uh, I have a lot of pictures. I'd like to put more pictures on it because I think one thing I forgot to put in was how I used plumber's tape on the inside to attach the cow panels to the top of the hotbed frame. Um, and I'm open to any suggestions, uh, uh, constructive criticism I'm open to. If you guys do go by the plans, let me know what 
you would like more of, what you would like less of. Is there a picture or a part of the greenhouse that I forgot to put in? Um, again, what I'm trying to do with these eBooks and things like that is I'm trying to get more brand new materials together so that I can make them more beautiful. This one was under hundred dollars. I wanted to make it uh, something that anybody would, could reproduce. And um, it's all girl construction. None of it is professional construction, but it's incredibly sturdy. It's very, very sturdy. Uh, it is square and um, it, it has made it through an Idaho winter, which has heavy snow and high wind. And now here we are, we've had a few days that we're in the seventies and my venting system worked just fine. I have a, a square cut in the back with a little bit of bird netting across the top so cats and ducks can't get in. So the air goes from the bottom through that hole and up through the top door of the greenhouse so that the venting is just absolutely fine. I have tomatoes, celery, basil. Um, what else do I have on that side? Um, finish your food, please. Uh, I have oh, some, some very warm weather crops on one side that in, in weather like what we're having now, which is in the twenties, um, Fahrenheit, very cold, very cold at night. Uh, the tomatoes and everything are just fine. I do have them on top of a hotbed and then I have a cloth over the top, uh, a frost cloth. And then they have, of course, the plastic over the top from the greenhouse itself. And, um, there hasn't been any, oh, potatoes, potatoes are the other things that are in it that are, uh, okay, go get a hat on, honey. Go move quickly so you can go ahead. Kaya, you're not going outside until Paige is ready to go with you, okay? Um, so find something to do, like go get your bed made or something while you're waiting for, okay? Um, so I'm really, really happy with it. What I'd really like to do is in the front of the row garden, I'd actually like to put a big, um, cow panel hotbed greenhouse all along one side and actually put the rabbits in it during the summer with the shade cloth over the top and um, let the rabbits build compost up for me in the front garden and do the same thing with quail in the front garden. And I guess that's why it feels important to me to make it prettier is that if you could grow rabbits and if you could, could grow quail and do it kind of incognito, something like these hotbed setups that I have, then you wouldn't have to worry about bird flu and you'd always have eggs and meat. Um, so this is kind of my goal, why I have these books up is, is uh, I'm more of a scavenger type. I, I don't go in and buy uh, new building materials, but I, I just don't have the money to go buy new building materials because these projects are big. So that's what I'm trying to do with these uh, books. <coughs> Michael also said, good morning. I need to get a greenhouse together, but it needs to be heavy duty. We get a lot of wind here in Iowa where I am, I'm at. So yes, that's what, that's why I am talking about this today is that for those of you, I have a lot of people come to me and say, well, but we have super high winds here. And I'm like, we have wind farms here. Uh, during April and March, we didn't have a day that had less than 20 mile an hour winds. And then uh, we were getting 50 and 60 mile an hour gusts. We do get, get to, uh, tornado weather occasionally, but um, you can have big gusts and a lot of wind without it being tornado, you know, weather. It's still damaging. It's still destructive, even if it's not a tornado. Um, Paige and Kaya, come here. Okay, you're going to milk. Um, Paige, go put... Um, uh, go put Graham down in his kennel so that you can help her milk, milk okay? Paige, or Kai, you should not have to get the goat out to the wood pile. Just with the sheep gone, you can just milk her right next to their pen, okay? Am I doing the hay thing with just a little bit of hay in the corner? Yeah, inside the container. So I've got to do that, yes. In a box, in a box, okay? Um... Doctor who said any plans for potatoes. So I've already planted my potatoes, uh, the ones in the hotbeds. They're in the big greenhouse in the hotbed. And then I've got one, two, three, four. I've got four uh, places where I've got potatoes planted in hotbeds. It's much too cold to put them in the ground right now, but they're, they're this tall 
at this point, like big and bushy. And again, we've had five days now of 20 degree weather at night and 30 degree weather, maybe into the forties during the day. So um, at this time of year, when we have this kind of weather, I don't take the frost cloths off and I don't water. I have automatic watering systems set up, but in this kind of weather, when it's so cold, if I water when, when it's this cold, the cold water going into the hotbed cools the bed down and then the plants will freeze. And so uh, I wait until the day warm in like the fifties. And then I turn on my automatic watering system and it waters all the hotbeds at the same time. And I do show how to do that in the little ebook that I just made. Um, and then uh, along with that, I have two, two books for that. One book shows you how to build the hotbeds and one book shows you how to build the greenhouse part of it. They're not in the same book just because um, it would be very long if I were to do that. So I do have both plans in one in one listing and it's I think $9.99 I think is what it is. I think the hotbed plans themselves are like $3.99. The greenhouse plans are $7.99 and so I did $9.99 for the two combined. Let's see. Moho Palm said, I was thinking yesterday about the year or so that I spent in Twist, Washington. <clears throat> I have never been there. Is it possible to just have the hotbed outside and just covered with plastic? Yes. And if you guys have watched any of my most recent videos, my last two videos that were about planting potatoes, that's exactly what they're in. I have uh, one hotbed that is planted to strawberries and potatoes, and all it has is a frost cloth over the top. And then I have another hotbed that has greens and onions and potatoes in it. And it has a frost cloth and a piece of plastic over the top. And then I have another one, the one from the, the video yesterday, where that one was a new hotbed that's actually heating up. And it has a frost cloth over it. And um, yes, you can definitely do the, it outside. The reason that I wanted to try doing it as a greenhouse with an actual arch over two beds is for my comfort in the winter and also the fact that if you do a new hotbed, you can plant again in January. Um, plant again in January, things germinate in the nice bottom heat that you get from a hotbed. And then you have things sprouting, you know, by the beginning of February. And the light in February is good enough that it will grow just about anything. You have enough daylight once you get into February that things are happy to grow. And so it means you can go out and greenhouse in comfort rather than being out in, in the exposed elements. In November, I did start a hotbed up that was not in a greenhouse. And what I found was that with the snow and with the cold weather and with trying to water it and everything, I didn't have anything to keep me warm while I was out messing with it. And so I didn't keep it up. I've done cold frames before. And uh, I, they're just so tedious. You have to go out and knock the snow off. You have to vent them on a bright day. You have to close them anytime the frost comes in. I hate cold frames because they're such high. Child will say, no, I don't want to mess with that. And so if you have an item, water things by hand with a little watering can, it's just not a big deal. Um, so about that last night. Ugh. Um, let's see. Della Smalley said, good morning. I'm just planting potatoes. It's just me, but I made two big kills. Y'all have a good and blessed Easter. Oh, happy Easter. Is today's Passover, isn't it? I think so. Um, Red Dirt Girl said, what kind of drill to buy that isn't too heavy for girl over 60s hands? So I just have a Ryobi. I think it's like 12 volt. Uh, the reason I use a lot of the little metal tabs, the, the angles, uh, the strong ties or whatever they're called. Hurricane strapping is another word that's used for it. The reason I used that was because when I first started to build hotbeds, I didn't know how to use tools. I if I could use hurricane strapping. So when I built my first hotbeds, I used hurricane strapping and it worked really well for me. Now it's a little frustrating because I can't get the beds open and apart uh, without like emptying them from the top because I can't get in to undo those screws. Now I, I prefer to attach mine and then the bed will fall open. Um, 
and I'll I'll use and I'll I'll use old um, exhaust hoses on the outside. Um. Hey, L to survive. Prepped for you. Hello, Christy Betts. Good morning. L to survive said I'm in Southeast Washington and have been thinking about doing a greenhouse for started starting plants. Yes. Uh, Joyce Everson said, morning all. Have last Good Friday. Just picked up our seed potatoes. Excited to get outside to plant soon. Northeast Ohio. Yes. All of that. So um, so for our season, without, without a greenhouse, I have a three-month window to work in. And the first two, two, two weeks to a month of that first window is kind of iffy. You still have frost. And so in Idaho, if you're wanting to grow enough food to last for the rest of the year, you have to plant a massive amount and you have to plant it intensively. And um, it is very, very stressful. Everything is riding on this garden. And so, um, sorry about the dog in the background. He wants to go out and do chores with the girls, but they have to milk first. If they don't milk first, since the milking and everything, and he's so excited that it's hard for them to do it. So he's got to wait. Um, what was I saying? So for me here in my area, I have almost, well, last year I had 300 growing days. I started planting things in February. I put my sweet potatoes and everything in, in March. And I was harvesting out of that bed and growing in that bed until November. My normal growing season here is June, July, August. That's my growing season, three months. Um, you can do a little bit of harvesting into September and you can do a little bit of planting in May, but you are having frost still in May and even into June. And so June, July, August are your main growing season. And so me, for me to be able to go from middle of February to the end of November because I have hotbeds is, is a completely different growing experience than what the, most people in Idaho have or in the surrounding states. And I'm not just growing cold season crops, I was growing sweet potatoes and peppers and things like that in the hotbed during that time. Um, so, let's see, what do I grow for chicken feed? I don't grow chicken feed. I do have free range chickens that run around and get insects, but I don't grow chicken feed, I purchase it. But I purchase it six months in advance to have it on hand. What else? Um, so my, my greenhouse, that's my uh, commercial greenhouse. If I didn't have hotbeds in it, I could not start growing in March and February. The ground is still too cold. I have to have a hotbed in a greenhouse to be able to extend my season that much. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to it. I love the little greenhouse I made up. I'm going to grow, I'm going to build some more. If I can get my commercial greenhouse sold, I'm going to, and I'm going to put that money into building more of these little uh, self-heating greenhouses, and I'm going to try and make them prettier. I'm going to try and make them so that people that live in HOAs can have uh, sleuth, hidden contraband rabbits and contraband quail and grow their own food without people knowing that they're even there. Um <laughs> Watchman said the best way to grow veggies in Idaho is to move to the south. Well, <clears throat> I guess uh, one of the reasons people move to Idaho is because of our political climate. We're, we're you know, we're pretty big on gun rights and free speech and and our our property taxes are pretty low. Our cost of living is pretty low. And so a lot of people come here because they're escaping something else somewhere else. And um, as far as growing, we don't have a lot of the pests. And, um, you know, it, it's a mixed bag no, no matter where you go. But that's one of the, th those are some of the reasons that a lot of people are actually coming to Idaho right now is for freedom. You know, we didn't have a lot of the big shutdowns that they had in other states. Uh, you know, and, and, and some people think that's pretty important. Brooke said, good morning. Just put in a dozen asparagus crowns. Good job. Hey, Idaho Hillbilly, good morning. The Quiet Life, hello, hello. Good way. And a lot of them have been freedom-minded, and that's been lovely. I hope that those who are not freedom-minded become freedom-minded very quickly as we're coming to an election. Um, it has their weird weather that is frustrating. 
All right, Sugar Creek Homestead, hello, hello. All right, so I think my kids probably need me to go help them with chores right now or at least help them not be fighting. I wanted to let you guys know that the plans for the little hotbed greenhouse are up. You can make it as long as you want. Don't make it wider, but you can add pallets and make it longer and longer. So it's really a significant big greenhouse. Um, the one that I made was two side pallets, two pallets long, one pallet wide, and then two beds set next to each other with cow panels over the top. The limiting factor is the width because of the path and the need to keep the arch high enough on that on that um, cow panel that it'll shed snow. Yes, honey. Okay, thank you. Brex said I'm going to buy your eBooks. If you do, that would be lovely. It would mean I could do some different projects here in the homestead that currently are not on the books because uh, building you know materials are so expensive right now. Um, so yeah, so they're on the Etsy store. I do have some other books, uh, that are about livestock, the goats, the rabbits, the pigs. What else do I have? And poultry. Those are the four livestock books. And I'm constantly going and up, upgrading them, changing them. And, um, so those are the ones that I've had up there for a lot of years. Those are the ones that paid for the original Kickstarter for the commercial greenhouse I have. Those were part of what I did with the Kickstarter was the four livestock books. Um, but now I've got the hotbed little PDF and I've got the uh, self-heating greenhouse. And so I think I've got six plans on there now. Again, if you find that there's mistakes in it or that you feel like something could be changed, please give me some constructive criticism because I've only had it up since like day before yesterday. And um, I may, I may have missed something. Again, I like to print them two pages to a sheet, fit to page, and um, that's how I like to print them. I do recommend printing them, and I think they're just a little bit easier to work with. Um, Red Dirt Girl said there's a link. Um, I guess I could try to see. Let's see if I can remember what the link would be. Um, Etsy dot shop dot com forward slash shop forward slash dirt patch heaven. I think that's how it works. Um, I don't know if that'll show up as a link since I didn't put HTTPS, um, but it, it might. Hopefully that went up. Um, pin message. Okay, I think I pinned, pinned it. Did it show up, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Um, weather is always keeps us humble, doesn't it? Uh, when I was in Tulsa, when I was in Oklahoma, I built these hotbeds as well. And we had ice storms and really cold temperatures. And I had basil and other uh, tender plants inside a hotbed. And it did just fine in February. That's when I planted it in Tulsa was in February. I took everything that was underneath my grow lights, planted it into the hotbed and everything was fine. So even in the South, it's nice to have them just to, you know, experiment with and, and see how it works. Oh, that would be wonderful. Lynn Hopwood said, I'm a book designer and would love to help you with your books. That would be awesome. I need all the help I can get. Oh my gosh, it's been stressful. I've been wanting, I, I've been wanting to redo the books for a very long time and I've had help from different people. But in the end, uh, I find it so intimidating to sit down and write a book that uh, I have I have just put out what I have and hopefully it's enough and I've priced it so that hopefully people don't feel like um, they're getting a first timer's book and yet paying, you know, a massive amount of money for something that isn't perfect. Um, hey, Sandra. Hey, Marcos. Hey, Sharon. All right. So. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah, the the big reason why I want to experiment with better materials is because I really do want to allow the rabbits to live outside of cages. I really want the quail to be able to live outside of cages. And I want to be able to use them to build compost without having to haul compost. Um, to let it be a natural system that looks attractive 
and that once they have finished living in it, you can just open the bed up and harvest compost instead of having to turn it. And instead of having to have animals on wire or in small cages, um, I want to be able to have a bigger, better system for that. And that's why I'm trying to get all this done. Brooke said, new construction, we dumpster dived fur lots. If two by four is plywood and two by six enough to make a large shed. I think that's fantastic. Um, and I used to do that when I was younger, that kind of thing. Oh, I feel like I've got makeup that didn't get blended. There we go. Um, I used to do that when I was younger. And um, with gas prices and everything now, and also with uh, being older, as you know, I try really hard to make my gardens and everything super easy because I realize my own physical limitations. Uh, hauling pallets around and stacking them and unstacking them and hauling compost around and piling it and unpiling it. Um, as I get older, I've always had autoimmune disorder issues, but as I get older, they become more and more pronounced. There's less and less that I can do. And so um, what I have found is that sometimes I just have to have a little bit of extra money to pay somebody to do it for me. Because if I go and do the hauling myself, I then, I then don't have the energy to build the project myself. It can set me back for a week or two. And um, I think that's true for a lot of people as they age, seniors. I think for seniors, it's really hard to go out and scrounge materials. And a lot of times they have money where they maybe don't have physical strength. And that's kind of where I am now is that if at all possible, I generally pay to have things delivered now. Uh, just because I, I don't have it in me the way that I did when I was in my 20s and 30s. Um, Andrew said, do you miss Oklahoma and visiting Idaho in the summer? Yeah, I desperately miss Oklahoma. I dream about it a lot. Uh, John and I, if we can get this homestead completely paid off here in the next couple of years, we would like to buy property in the South and um, learn to grow a garden in the South and all that kind of thing. We, we really, really miss it. It was, it was a pretty... Um, it was a pretty amazing time. It was, you know, he was in school and I was working and to support the family. So it was a hard time, but we, we loved the area. Brooke said, head to new construction areas and ask for their leftovers. I think that's a fantastic idea. And we actually have a, a new neighborhood going in here around the corner. So I should, I should go see if I can find the foreman or, or whatever they're called, the construction boss and see what I can get a hold of. Empty Nester said, hello from Ohio. Um, Brooke said, we'll buy them later today. Is that the plans you're talking about? That's awesome if you do. Um, Andrew Blue said, finally have a day of little wind, having a good productive day. That's awesome. Where are, we have a little breeze this morning, but not nearly as much as we've had lately. And I will probably go out and maybe open the doors on the greenhouses. I haven't opened the doors in a few days because I want to not let any of that cold in. Um, but I'll probably go do that today. Okay, Brooks said, have a good day, y'all. See ya. Dirt Girl said, come to Oklahoma. I would love to come to Oklahoma. We would love to do that. Um, you got milk? Yeah. Okay, I got to run and strain milk. Love you guys. Make sure to go check things out. And I'll talk to you later.